Humankind has evolved from the ape form to the present human being form over the course of millions of years, so the ideas about life and its evolution further in the future are only speculations. We can, however, predict that distinct mental and physical traits will emerge as a result of the use of technology. Of technology. Susan Greenfield's first novel, 2121, for example, which has just been released, and which the reviews say is not very encouraging, suggests that evolution is not only a slow and an unsteady process, but also a complex one. Thus, no one would actually be able to predict its exact forms. Basically, even if we could predict what it would be like, we would not be alive to see the changes. Nonetheless, it also suggests that if the present cultural and technical trends persist, or change at a uniform or constant rate, we can expect certain transformations. For instance, Greenfield suggests that the ability that people have to communicate with each other will have decreased because of the use of new technologies such as mobile phones. Greenfield also suggests that our minds might become infantilized due to the excessive use of social media such as Twitter and Facebook. Lecture was on about the evolutionary changes started from ape to the current human from. Evolution is a slow process and not a steady one so it's a bit hard to predict what kind of human form would be in the future. Right now we all abound within technology that is unpredicted about future kind. Thermometers are general household goods, but very few of us know that they can be used for multiple purposes other than measuring body temperature. The picture above clarifies the various purposes for which we require different types of thermometers. The basic way a thermometer works is that when the temperature increases, the liquid, the liquid in the thermometer expands and rises, whereas in cold conditions the liquid contracts and falls. Alcohol thermometers are an alternative to mercury thermometers because they are not as toxic. The mercury thermometer was invented by Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. A thermistor is the common part that helps the digital thermometer work without mercury. This circuit measures temperature and converts it into resistance. Three other types of thermometers are the pill, the Galileo, and the infrared thermometers, but let us focus on the first three for now. The type of liquid to be filled in the gas tube is determined by the manufacturer. Tolu toluene, kerosene, or ethanol are some varieties of liquids used. The color of most of these liquids is just like the color of water, hence a few solid colors are added.
The lecture is about the different types of thermometers that exist and their various features. The lecturer says that these devices are not only used to measure body temperature. It is also said that the basic way they work is that when temperature rises, the liquid inside the thermometer which C and B of various sorts, such as toluene, kerosene, mercury, or ethanol also rises and expands, whereas if the temperature decreases, the liquid contracts and falls. Other types of thermometers are the pill thermometer, the Galileo thermometer, and the infrared thermometer. The symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, a type of dementia, usually develop gradually with mild memory loss and become severe enough to interfere with daily tasks of a patient. It severely affects patients' memory, thinking, and behavior. Though people above 65 years age are mainly affected by Alzheimer's disease, it is not just a disease of old age, but younger people. Up to 5% of people with the disease are also at risk. According to the mechanism of this disease, initially, a clump of proteins grow in the brain, which damage brain cells of a patient, but later on it kills the brain cells. Hence, certain areas of brain start shrinking, and patient gradually lose memory power. Depending on age and other health conditions, the average lifespan of patients with Alzheimer's is 4 to 20 years. With no cure available in sight, Current treatment of Alzheimer can only slow down symptoms and improve the patient's quality of life. The lecture is about the Alzheimer's disease which is taking place mostly amongst old age people. On an initial stage clumps of proteins start growing in the brain which starts killing the brain cells and later on starts controlling other parts of the body too. Although with no cure available yet, the current treatment can help in slowing down the symptoms and improve the quality of lifespan which is in between 4 to 20 years. Contrary to the majority of nations from the west of Europe, at least until the 1950s, Spain had never undergone a great industrial revolution which would have changed its economy from one of agriculture and handicrafts to one of industry. In the early modern era, Spaniards sought wealth and power abroad, either on the European continent or in the newly discovered lands of North and South America, Africa, and the Far East to a greater extent than the entrepreneurs from other countries in Western Europe. The Spanish Empire of the 16th century relied on its shares in Africa, North and South America, and Europe itself. Moreover, metropolitan Spain was a major element in the great political, religious, and economic ready employment then happening in Europe. Spain waged war throughout most of the 16th century using the whole world as its stage. 
From the mid-16th century to the mid-17th century, the national debt was defaulted at least six times, causing very harmful effects on the nation's banking system and making the foreign creditors of the Spanish crown and government suffer significant losses. A difference between Spain and the West of Europe is that before the second half of the 20th century, this nation had not had an industrial revolution which could have changed its economy because Spain had depended for hundreds of years on other territories such as America, Africa, and the Far East to survive. Furthermore, Spain had been involved in wars with other countries, especially throughout the 16th century minus, minus, which prevented it from having a healthy banking system. When I first started to meditate, the coaching was to simply pay concentration to my breath. And when my mind started wandering, to bring it back. Sounded easy enough. Yet, I'd sit on these silent retreats, sweating through t-shirts in the middle of wintry weather. I'd take naps every chance I got, as it was really hard work. Actually, it was fatiguing. The instruction was simple enough, but I was missing something really vital. So why is it so hard to be attentive? Well, research shows that even when we're really trying to pay attention to anything, like maybe this talk, at some point, about half of us will flow off into a daydream or have this push to check our Facebook feeds. So what's going on here? It turns out that we're fighting one of the most evolutionarily conserved learning processes presently known in science, one that's conserved back to the most basic nervous systems known to men. This reward-based learning process is called positive and negative support and essentially goes like this. We see some food that looks tasty. Our brain says, Calories, survival. We eat the food, we taste it, it tastes good. And especially with sugary foods, our body sends a warning sign to our brain that says, remember what you're eating and where you found it. We lay down this context-dependent recall and learn to repeat the procedure next time. See food, eat food, feel good, and repeat. Trigger, actions, reward. The narrator speaks about his experience with himself. He was speaking about his failed attempts to pay attention to tasks at hand and how easily we could all get distracted from the tasks at hand. He goes on and explains how our brain works. 
he concludes saying that our brain values trigger, behavior and reward. Pain is something we cannot avoid. We have all experienced, one way or another, that unpleasant sensation, which can last from a few minutes to several hours. However, it is considered that despite the suffering that it causes, pain is essential for survival. As an important element of the defence system of our organism, it helps us avoid circumstances which could harm us by activating the reflexes of getting away, protecting a part of our body when it is hurt and making us learn to stay away from the situation which caused the pain in the first place. The International Association of the Study of Pain has described pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience related to a real or potential tissue injury. However, this account only refers to physical pain and we must take into account social pain too. Social pain is the emotional suffering caused by a breakup, loved ones going away or the growing apart from the social circle. In either case, it is considered as personalised, subjective and every individual learns how to relate it to their own experiences. Even though pain, which has been defined by experts as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with an injury, and which can even last for years, is something undesirable, it seems to be an essential part of our survival skills, in the sense that it can prevent us from being exposed to the same circumstances that have caused us pain in the past. In addition, it is important to take into account that there can also be social pain related to situations such as a breakup. People wear clothes according to the climatic conditions. This helps them to sustain the climatic conditions. During summer, people sweat a lot so they like to wear light cotton clothes. But clothes are not readily available. There is a process in making clothes. Cotton grows on plants. It is found inside the fruit of the cotton plant called bowls. Farmers pick the cotton out from these bowls. The picked cotton looks like a bundle of some fluffy material, but actually it has thin fibers in it. These fibers are twisted together to make long threads. This process is called spinning. These threads are then woven into fabrics by weavers. The weaving machine is called a loom. The fabric is then dyed in unusual colors. Beautiful designs can be printed on it to make it look prettier. Dyeing and printing a fabric are done in a factory by dyers and printers. This fabric is then sent to the market and is used to make a variety of clothes. These clothes are then turned into beautiful outfits. We get other clothes and materials from plants. Jute is also obtained from a plant and is used to make gunny bags, ropes, carpets, etc. Linen fiber is obtained from the flax plant. It is mainly used to make bed sheets, curtains, and towels. 
coir is obtained from the outer covering of a coconut. Coir is used to make foot mats, ropes, mattresses, etc. You will find jute is used to make many other useful products. The lecture was about the cloth making process, as we wear clothes made of fabric, which is something not grown on trees. There is a process for making clothes, like cotton is taken from plants and spun into threads. These threads are made into clothes. We even get jute from plants and used for different materials. Tropical agriculture includes the production, collection, and processing of all crops useful to man which occur naturally, or can be grown, in the climates of a torrid zone. This type of region is characterized by a fairly uniform working day for plants of about 12 hours, with maximum solar radiation available each day and throughout the year, together with generally excessive rainfall, especially in coastal and low regions. In general, plants of this region are perennial in growth and develop more or less continuously, often for a period of several years. Thus, harvest of the crops may be made at any time during the year, which is convenient to the operator. Sometimes, crop harvests are seasonal, depending upon regular periods of rainfall. Crop rotation is mainly dictated by necessity and is, in general, of much larger cycles than that of the temperate regions where crops are changed each year or every other year, according to a well-established plan. Coffee and cocoa are grown usually under more or less shade of the original forest stand, while tea requires little shade. Bananas are usually grown in a cleared area and may be planted and grown as a temporary crop for 10 or 15 years, while coconuts, oil palms, and rubber trees may be grown as interplanted species. The lecture was about tropical agriculture. The lecturer said that this kind of agriculture takes place in dry or hot areas torrid regions such as coastal or lowlands. Some of the products that are cultivated in these areas are coffee and cacao which require some shade and bananas which are you. Swirly grown in a cleared area. Tropical plants, in general, are perennial in growth, and can continue to develop for several years, which means they do not need to be harvested at a specific time of the year. 
However, some of them are seasonal and depend on rainfall periods. A level is an instrument used for establishing a true horizontal, a horizontal plane passing through a point of vision. Levels are also called spirit levels. A level basically consists of a small glass tube or vial nearly filled with alcohol, ether, or other non-freezing fluid in order to contain a bubble of air when hermetically sealed. Levels are used to test whether a surface is level by the position of the bubble. The instrument, in one form or another, is widely used by masons, carpenters, mechanics, engineers, electricians, and plumbers for a variety of leveling purposes, including wood and metal construction, foundation work, pipe laying, machinery installation, and road building. The level's accuracy depends on the curvature of the glass tube, which may be ground on the inside to a barrel shape or simply bent. Levels are made in many designs using different materials, such as wood or metal. They may have one or more vials, some at right angles to the main vial for measuring plumb as well as horizontal surfaces. The lecture was about levels, which are instruments that many professionals such as engineers, masons, electricians, and carpenters use to make sure that surfaces they are working with are flat. The basic component of a level, which can be made out of metal or wood, is a small tube which contains a liquid such as alcohol or ether. These liquids have to be hermetically sealed in order to be left with a bubble inside. This bubble is the reference used to distinguish if a surface is level or not. Levels can be used in construction, pipe laying, road building, etc. What is a gap year? This is a year taken in between high school and college for self-learning and discovery, usually to travel the world or to take up certain interests. The Gap Year is a British invention that offers students a year-long volunteer program just before college. Over the years, the concept has evolved and has spread throughout Europe, Australia, and some Asian countries. As much as a tenth of British students took a Gap Year compared to the 1% of American students, this large disparity lies in how the American and British educational systems work. American students have far more extracurricular activities than their European counterparts. During high school, they are involved in a number of different clubs where they can experience different facets of life. This is most likely why they no longer feel the need for a gap year experience. However, the most likely reason may be the belief of Americans to start a career as soon as possible. Taking that gap year will shave off a year from your career that could have been spent working your way up the corporate ladder.
The lecture talks about gap years, year-long breaks students take before college to experience the world. The sabbatical is popular among Europeans and Australians, but not for Americans. This likely because of the abundant extracurricular activities many American students enjoy during high school, but perhaps it may also be because of the notion that they should start their careers early.